Last time on Races to Places, we introduced you to Mr. Matzinger, Lyndon let Basil have a lie down, and the dreaded word puncture had to be used again. Lucas negotiates some fuel for the crotch rockets, Lyndon seems keen to inspect some engineless versions, which seem to run very well with no maintenance. And the pedal, look. The bearings, look. A little bit of play in there. And the pedal, a bit loose. It's okay, yeah? Good. Moving east and then south, High rollers of adventure motorcycling leave the town of Aktobi and arrive in Aralsk. Aralsk was formerly a fishing port and harbour city on the banks of the Aral Sea. Has a population of 30,347 and was a major supplier of fish to the neighbouring regions. However, ships no longer sail from this port. As you can see in these satellite images, since 1960 the sea has been retreating due to feeder rivers being diverted for irrigation of cotton crops on a huge scale. The Cockerell Dam, built in 1990 to help save the Aral Sea, initially collapsed and was rebuilt in 2005 as a last-ditch bid to save the northern section of this once unique region. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Aralsk and the experience so far we've had here. Um, basically we arrived yesterday and after getting into Kazakhstan um, it's important to get this uh, custom document stamped which is this little piece of paper here, within five days of arriving. Now, we're spending six days here, so we have to get it done before we can exit Kazakhstan. Uh, we arrived and was told that the guy had gone to a meeting, the only guy, there's only one person that can stamp this piece of paper, and he'd gone to a meeting, so we sat and waited, they said 20 minutes, after one hour, we asked again, they say, maybe seven o'clock, so we waited two hours now, and the guy never showed up, so we decided to go and do some bike maintenance. What are you doing, Lyndon? Uh, we're going to try the immigration police for the third time. Uh, we came yesterday, was told to come back, came back after two hours, told to come back tomorrow morning, came back this morning, told to come back this afternoon, after three o'clock. It's now four o'clock, so we're going to try one last time. Let's see if we're successful. Here is the police station with the immigration police inside. Here are the passports. Follow me. See what we can find. It appears that the police station is closed for business. So three times we're told to come back. Every time the place is either the man is not here, come back later, or now it's closed. This is a joke. <laughs> I guess we don't get the immigration card stamped after all. Let's see what happens at the border now. So this is our usual uh, stop at the beginning of every day. So usually we come and get some breakfast, which consists of maybe bananas, some food, some of the local food. Um, we always get plenty of water, so we've got three litres each for our camelbacks. We tend to get pasta because it's light and it's easy to cook with some sauce for our evening meal for camping 
sometimes some tuna, uh, some oranges for later. The reason for oranges for later is because they pack and travel well and don't burst everywhere. Bananas tend to get a little bit soft. We've got some cheese and some ham. All set and ready to leave, but it looks like Mr. Matzinger's steed isn't going anywhere. While Lucas begins diagnostics, Lyndon sees an opportunity to try out his new travel tool. So, here we are in a little restaurant and we go to the food section. Should point to what we want. So right now we want eggs and some bread with some cheese. So that's what we just did. And it works a treat. Lucas's bike decided it didn't want to start with a flat battery. And we're just having a look at it now. So what have you found, Lucas? Um, we took apart the plug from the regulator to measure the resistance and also the output voltage. And we, the plug was very hard to take apart. And then we saw that the connection had melted. So, so melted connection, that's the stator connection, right? Yes, stator to regulate the connection, yes. So the plan now is to um, basically cut the plug out and then solder the wires together and in a hope that then we have a steady voltage on each each phase and then we can uh, get back on the road again. We've got this really quality look, wobble wobble soldering iron. Uh, what we're going to do is just solder the uh, connections together for the state. Ever since I was a young boy, music filled with the repairs undertaken, it's fingers crossed. Voltmeter reading near 14, this means the battery is now being charged and the repair has been a success. Lucas can now seal the heat shrink on the wires, insulating them from a short circuit. The dynamic duo don't seem to be complaining too much about the terrain the environmental disaster has left behind. In the word of the long departed ship's captains, it's full speed ahead. Lyndon spots something in the distance and decides to pull over and check it out. Even though the sea has vanished underground, springs still pop up in the Aral Sea. Amazing! 62 degrees C, the water in here. It's totally crazy. Which means it shirts off for the party boys of adventure motorcycling. Showered, our fresco style, the boys begin to investigate. Humans are all different in the surroundings that make them feel happy. For some, wide open spaces far away from civilization gives peaceful time to think, reflect, and explore. Happy days. Let me turn around and show you what's the other way. Exactly the same. They soon realize it's not just one or two ships that have come to rest on the seabed, but whole fleets. So in this ship you can clearly see that they cut the side of the ship out to take the engine out. Obviously one of the most valuable parts of the ship. Do I have permission to come aboard? Permission to come aboard. Okay, so we just uh, climbed inside one of these massive ships and that we just found on the dry seabed of the Aral Sea. As you can see, it's probably been here for like, I don't know, 30, 40 years. It's completely rusted. 
um, and just like buckle under the strain of just being sat on the seabed floor. Uh, but just the construction of the ship is like completely like old school. Like I'm looking at the gussets and from an engineering point of view, they're like just tacked in place with weld. Uh, and, it, and even these big pillars, pillars here, um, they, the weld on them is really uh, not very substantial. Uh, I'm sh for sure wouldn't like to be travelling across the ocean in this single skin steel construction that's tacked together with some pretty dodgy looking welds. Well, there's a guy cannibalising. It's going to take a long time. With the dried area of the Aral Sea only being a few hundred kilometres wide, it can be crossed in a day or two. Lyndon takes to the helm. find a small village store en route which seems to have everything they'll need for the journey ahead. Let's go inside. Apparently it's a Kazakh specialty. All these wild horses that we saw today, they're eventually being caught and eaten and you've got a can of horse. Horse meat? I think we should try it. <laughs> really? Of course. I'm, I'm up for it. I'm up for it if you are. <laughs> we're, going, we're trying some horse meat. She says it's very good, it's a local See, you too. How about a can of apricots for dessert? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Some apricots. We've got some water here. Look, some oranges. And in the fridge, in the fridge, there's fuel filters in the fridge. It's always good. A cup of spark plugs. Spark plugs? Oh, yeah. How about some sweet peas to go with our sandwich? I always look for spark plugs on the fruit shelf. <laughs> right behind the coffee and above the yogurts. Um, what else do we need? We bought some vodka. We've got some <laughs> bread, yogurt, Snickers, horse meat. What else could you need? Nothing. I think we're good. Yum yum. Horse meat. Kazaki specialty. I don't know what all the fuss was about in the UK with this horse meat scandal thing. This is Kazaki horse meat. And it tastes delicious. Well, it's kind of okay. So we're just sitting in the back streets of a, a little town, having some hard bread and dunking it in my yogurt to try and soften it up a little bit because it's quite. Uh, it's quite dry. And then a little old lady brought us a cup of tea, yellow tea, which is nice, and also some lovely cuisine, which I'm going to try for the first time now. So it's kind of like a dumpling with some uh, onions on it. Let's give it a go. Snap, spurs! Very good. Snaps. Snaps? No, no. no. Ah, <laughs> Cannot just drink your snaps. Thank you for the food. It's very good. Bye -bye. Lucas's stomach commanding most of his blood supply to digest his horse meat sandwich, his brain is left a little lacking, and he experiences what is commonly known in off-road motorcycling as an off. Is this Lucas? Yes. Lucas Matzinger? Hey, look at me. <laughs> What's, why is your peak all bent? Is it bent? I don't know. <laughs> why is your helmet all scratched? <laughs> I was trying to get the peak bent a bit better so it blocks the sun better. With my face on the ground. <laughs> Smashed. Looking a little bit second hand now, Lucas. With this, the guys decide to set up camp for the night. We 
really hope you've enjoyed the first season of Races to Places, which has covered Linden building Basel, meeting Lucas, crossing snow-filled passes, and finally crossing a sea with no water. Not to mention the numerous people he's met and the borders he's crossed. All we have left to say is stand by for the next season of Races to Places because if you like season one, you won't believe the epic footage we have coming for season two.